Thank you for joining us. Uh, we just watched the uh, shorts program titled OK Cine Latino Shorts Program USA 1 to 7. And we have some of the uh, amazing filmmakers here with us today. We're so excited to have you guys at the seventh annual Oklahoma Cine Latino Film Festival, virtual film festival. And uh, we'll start uh, with uh, JD. We'll start with you. Uh, uh, tell us about yourself and the film that, uh, that you represent and, what it, and, and a little bit of brief, brief synopsis of the film. Sure. Uh, my name is J.D. Gonzalez. I'm a director DP in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I run a production company out here and the film that I made is Open Up. It's a quarantine film made with myself and my fiance about a character who has unprocessed grief and this unprocessed grief uh, basically summons a monster. I, I think there's a better way to, you know, uh, give a briefing on this and to yeah, to, to sum it all up, but uh, I'm going to leave it at that for now so we can hear the other people. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then we're going to move up to uh, Bertie. Bertie, tell us about yourself, where you at right now, and uh, about your film. Hi, my name is Virgie Rodriguez. I am based in Los Angeles, California, but I'm from New York City. Um, my film is called Dreamer, and it's uh, about a DACA recipient who, you know, comes back from Venezuela on a medical mission uh, uh, trip and gets stopped at, from, by a TSA agent that wasn't very welcoming and possibly, you know, the story kind of, I don't want to give it away. Well, they've just watched it, um, um, might get deported. So we kind of don't know how it ends, right? So uh, yeah, uh, especially with the climate that we're living in right now, I just wanted to kind of tell an immigrant story just from a different angle. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And then we'll go to Lorena. Lorena, please tell us about you, where you are right now, and your amazing film. Oh, I think you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> it happens. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, my name is Lorena Gordon. I am the writer director of At Last. I am originally from New York City, now here in Los Angeles. And our film At Last is a coming of age tale about a young high school girl who comes out on prom night. Fantastic. And um, we're moving on to Miguel. Can you please tell us about you, where you are right now, and about your amazing film? Uh, perfect. My name is Miguel Sahid. I am based out of Miami, but I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say it in Spanish because it, this is part hey. of the Cine Latino Adelante. Film Festival. I want to do the Spanish code. La, la película es completamente en, en, en español. Trata de unos niños aventureros que fueron a hacer un proyecto de cine de su escuela de actuación y fueron a esta casa a filmar una película. Y cuando llegan a la casa, eh, se encuentran con unos intrusos que ellos no esperaban. Realmente es la historia de unos inmigrantes, eh, pero contado de otro tipo de versión eh, y realmente nos deja entrever de la situación que pueden pasar los inmigrantes aquí en los Estados Unidos. Excelente, excelente. Muchísimas gracias, Miguel. Uh, going back to uh, another question, the next question would be, tell us about your production process. Uh, and we'll start with JD. Tell us about your production process and uh, if you encounter any challenges or struggles throughout the process? Um, sure, typically, okay, so typically I have a larger crew, so 10, to 10 15, 20 people on set. This, this, uh, I'm so sorry about the music. I'm sure there's tons of background noise. I'm in a cafe right now. It's my internet, it's getting set up at home. Anyway, um, so it's, it goes from having a 10 to 15 person crew down to just me and my fiance, who is not an actor. She is not a filmmaker. She, she is zero experience in the film world. So what you've just she's amazing. Is, <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah, she's phenomenal, right? I, I could talk her up all day. I mean, she's, she's actually in a national commercial campaign now that, you know, she got the acting bug and moved into it. It's great. So the challenge was, you know, really doing it all uh, without the support and help of my friends and really like testing my skill sets as a filmmaker on a solo level. The process itself, we wrote it in one day and then we spent a week preparing for it and then we shot it in three days. So it was th um, by three days, it's three 10 to 12 hour days. Um, and then from there, we, we were editing it. So I sent it off to an editor who's a good close friend of mine. He's uh, Ian Marks. He's fantastic. And 
yeah, went through the post-production process for a long time. Um, How long did it took to when you started rolling to finish the project? To finishing the project, we, okay, so we had a finished project around one month later. So it was all cut together. We had our picture lock and it was color, um, it was colored at that point, but it took us another six months to really dial it in um, because, you know, a month later work was picking back up for me and work was picking back up for everyone else. And right. so we had to, had to slow down the process a little bit. Right. I'll ask you the same uh, question, Bergy. Uh, how long did the production took and do you encounter any challenges or struggles in how you overcame those you know yeah i mean our shoot day our shoot day was 12 hours we shot that in a 12 hour day one day one location we just knocked it out i um was i guess ambitious and <laughs> just thinking i could do it we did it you know we made it happen but um you know i had i really counted on my crew my dp kicks ass maricela you know she's you know carrying around this camera she knew lighting she knew how to shoot things a certain way to make it look a certain way you know i was like i i don't know how we're going to recreate the inside of an airport but you know <laughs> my my production designers my co-director my co-producer diana just i just had a solid tight team that really made it happen that's that's was the biggest, my biggest fear was that we weren't gonna get everything um, in 12 hours, but we did. Uh, and you know, the process before that was I had written something and I was sitting on it for a while. And then I just kind of got annoyed at a lot of politically was what was happening with immigrants, seeing babies stuck at the border, all of that. And then um, I was still auditioning at the time and I had gotten some, I got a breakdown and the breakdown said something like Hispanic, speak with an accent but not an accent but a neutral accent and i just was like and she's a maid and i just i was like i'm like we need to start changing the narrative so that's just what i did i just took a story an immigrant story and flipped it so there was different things along the way after it after we were done we um editing took a while it took about so june 2019 to about january 2020 is when i had like final uh, a wow final. that's amazing yeah, it's it's incredible, you know, to turn it around in uh, such a you know short time. And, but still, you know, like with one day of filming, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, one day. I and I have a background in the industry, so I know kind of. I I knew I was like, we can shoot this in a day, you know. Maybe yeah, yeah. Fantastic. yeah. <laughs> Lorena, uh, tell us about the production of At Last. Uh, how long did it took you? to, you know, when you started filming to, you know, when you wrapped and when you finished post? Sure. So we shot at last for three days here in Los Angeles. Um, it was, I want to say the end of like January 18th through the 20th, I believe. Um, oh yeah, of 2020. So literally before March when the world came to a pause with the pandemic. So we were very fortunate and super grateful that we shot when we did and we got everything we needed coverage wise so we didn't have to go back for reshoots. Um, so yeah, so we were we started editing, uh, I would say around March actually when the pandemic started and but yeah, we just took our time in post-production. Post is what took the longest because at that point there was no rush and we didn't know, you know, what festivals were going to look like, if they were going to be virtual or in person. So yeah, we, I had an incredible team um, in, in my, in my post-production uh, of, of, yeah, with color, sound and everything. So that's where we took the, the longest, I would say. We shot three days and then post took a couple of months and we, we finished it in, uh, in Halloween, October 30th. First. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. It's, it's still a, a short time for <laughs> to finish the film. Um, Miguel, uh, platícanos un poquito acerca de, de, de intruders, de intrusos. ¿Cuánto duró la, la producción en sí? ¿Y qué, ¿Y qué fue para ti trabajar con, con, con tanto niño? Niños, sí, cuando, cuando con niños, when you work with kids, it's totally different. It's a different ball game. You need to be very prepared in your pre-production. You have to multiply with anabolics. O sea, tienes que estar bien seguro que eh, a qué hora entra, quién entra, cómo entra y tratar de seguir el schedule. We did it in one day. 
We got just one location. We prepared very well the location. Uh, the, the call out was at 5 a.m. for the kids was at 7, the first group. And then the other group of intruders uh, that was on like around 3 p.m. on to 2 a.m. So it would be like, we finish, we wrap it up. Um, I'm used to work with kids before. Eh, trabajar con niños pues se me hace bastante fácil. Eh, trabajo en un conservatorio de arte dramático. So que estos niños vienen trabajando con nosotros desde hace mucho tiempo. Muchos de mis niños son los que están ahora mismo en telenovelas, en teleseries. Entonces se me hace mucho más fácil wow. poder trabajar con ellos. Pero más sin embargo, cuando estamos trabajando eh, contra el reloj, porque uno pues quiere tener un buen shot o quiere tener un mejor eh, trabajo eh, y lo tiene todo supuestamente preproducido, pero cuando llegas allí todo cambia. No sé, el sol lo que sea, entonces then you have to rely on your DP and, and these people that, you know, that know so much about it. Uh, then you have to rely on with the, so many people. Like, for example, Ale Solanilla was my DP. Eh, fue el director de fotografía. Eh, Priscila y Linda Rojas fueron asistentes de producción. Eh, el otro director de esto fue Andrés Mejía, que es uno de los actores de, de que estaba en escena. Y el escrito fue formidable. El escrito es eh, por Edu y Tijerina, que fue el que escribió Cantinflas eh, y también escribió Jesucristo. Entonces el escrito es formidable, las actuaciones son muy lindas, pero yo creo que lo más lindo intruso fue la magia que hubo meantime we were doing it. We, we, there was a lot of magic meantime you're doing it. You know, that's the only thing that belongs to you, the process. Everything else, it belongs to the audience. Pero lo único que, que, que te pertenece es el proceso, then you have to have fun doing it. So we had a lot of fun. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's a great thing. We shoot, we shoot March 8th, like five days after, poof, coronavirus. So <laughs> shut down. So we, right on time, I'm like, no, my God, thanks God. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, that you guys barely made that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we're able to wrap before that. Oh, wow. And then, you know, moving on to the post-production, I'm, I'm guessing it was also a long process, right? So, um, uh, the next question will be for everybody uh, once again. Um, how did you guys uh, start in filmmaking? Uh, we'll start with JD again, uh, and then we'll just go around the room. Sure, I, I actually got started in high school. I was uh, privileged and blessed enough to go to a arts-focused high school. So we had our major an hour and a half every day. Um, it was, and that was video cinema arts for me, and that's where I found my passion for filmmaking. From there, I went to college in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, where I was surrounded by lots of different types of art, and that, you know, just grew into a career in uh, in film, working in New Mexico. And then I actually taught high school uh, at my old high school. I taught for five years um, in that that cinema arts program. And then I, when I left that, I moved out to New York and uh, started my career as a cinematographer. Um, but it never really stopped. I was always in commercial work and always in uh, short films and working with people outside of outside of the education uh, side of things. So yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Bergy, tell us about how you started in, in filmmaking. I believe you started making films, uh, producing, writing, directing, acting. Um, making films. I think I just started. Produ it was producing, and it was more just guerrilla stuff that I just did for myself here locally. Um, and uh, like I mentioned before, I was a, a dancer and a choreographer kind of in a previous life and, and working on set, I, I had the chance to work with some phenomenal directors and I, I feel like I, I watched that and learned it. Um, but uh, like I had mentioned earlier, I think it was seeing the stories that we're seeing, especially with Hispanic theme, Latino theme, women, women of color, just, I just, I got to the point where I was like, Yes, we're maids. Yes, we're detectives. Yes, I get it. But we are so much more than that as a community. So how can I tell this story? Let's take it upon ourselves to tell the stories we want to see. We can't complain anymore. We have to just do it. So I think I just kind of, like I had said, I, a breakdown came through and I was like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna write a story I want to see. And I, again, with my previous experience, 
my 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 DP and my director, my co-director, I think that's kind of what was like the catalyst. And then once I've been seeing the feedback I've been getting and that there is a vibrant community, there's a vibrant Latino community of filmmakers, of storytellers, and it's really exciting. So it's now even pushing me even more to continue to write and create. So I think I answered your question, but <laughs> that's, I mean, pretty much in a nutshell. No, you did. Got. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. That's great. Uh, Lorena, please tell us about how did you start in filmmaking when, um, and how many films have you made? Sure. So I guess I would say, I don't know. I picked up a camcorder when I was like 12 years old and started making short little things uh, with my cousins. And then I would say when I was 18, I, I started working as a production assistant on tons of sets in New York, you know, whether it was television or film sets. And that was honestly the best film school I could have ever asked for, you know, working on these sets and seeing how a set runs. And, you know, I, I would like to think I knew the technical aspects of it, but it's different once, you know, you're making a film. So, um, yeah, I went to film school at the School of Visual Arts for two years and left that and ultimately made the decision of just creating, you know, doing by or, or learning by doing. And uh, I think that's been my path. And uh, what I tell people is, yeah, you just have to create, you know, there's no excuses now, technology and just you can shoot things on your iPhone. And it's about building a community and, you know, just like a family you know, with, with people that just want to, with actors who want to act and people who want to be in your crew members and it's about creating. So that would be uh, how I, I guess I've come to this point. So I've made several uh, shorts up to this point with that last. That's awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Miguel, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you started in filmmaking and, and you know, how many films have you made so far? Okay, this is my first one. So I'm on version on this. So uh, this is my very first film. So uh, I, I was taking care of almost every detail uh, because I'm an actor. Uh, I've been acting since seven years old and uh, also direct many, many plays, um, musicals, uh, drama, comedies. And I've been involved in many films as an actor. So you learn by doing it, uh, but you didn't learn the part of the DP or other type of, of the other side of the production. And I was always interested about that. And I try to, to look a little bit and, 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 and get more information about it. Because if you're an actor, a well-rounded actor, uh, figure it out, what a, a DP have to go through, a director have to go through, it will be all our work, it will be easier. You know, it's not all about ego of the actor. We have to take care of many other things. No? Then the director need to deal with it. Y a veces como uno como, como director, pues he tenido, he tenido actores super famosos. O sea, he tenido actores al frente mío que son estrellas en Venezuela, en Puerto Rico, en, en México. Estrellas, they are stars, you know, in front of you. So most likely... Those are the most difficult actors. Porque los niños es tan fácil trabajar con ellos. Los adultos son fácil trabajar. Pero cuando vienen las estrellas grandes, uno piensa, ah, oh, I have to treat this one different because it's a star. But then, cuando los conoces, te das cuenta que no. Te das cuenta que tiene los mismos miedos que cualquier otro actor. Te das cuenta de que tiene las mismas oportunidades de crecimiento que cualquier otro actor. Que aunque lleven 50 años actuando, todavía se sienten nerviosos ante la cámara. And that's beautiful. O sea, y eso es bonito poder llevarlo a la cámara y decir, wow, o sea, y, y, y quise empezar a hacer eh, cine porque me gusta contar historias. Y como Virgie, I want to tell this story the way that I want to say it. Porque he tratado de, no sé, conseguir otro crew. Hey, ¿Qué tal si hacemos esta película? Así, 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 pero nunca... Uh, nunca podemos encontrar exactamente lo que quiero, ¿no? Nunca estoy como satisfecho. Suena, suena feo, pero nunca me satisface el trabajo final. En esta ocasión dije, me gustó. Todavía hay áreas de oportunidades, uh, todavía hay área de crecimiento. Hay ciertas áreas que todavía yo no quedé, ah, 100%. And now I already have my second one, which is called Deja Vu. It's uh, in a comedy style. I just did it, and now it's on post-production. So... 
Uh, this is my second baby. Let's see how this one goes. It's just with adults. Um, and it's a comedy style, calling Deja Vu. So, okay. Pero ahí va. Pero esta, de verdad que es una excelente oportunidad. Make sure to submit to Okay, Cine Latino 2022. <laughs> uh, uh, real quick, I want to uh, kind of just kind of go around the room and, and talk about like interesting stories, you know, while filming. Um, we'll start with JD since uh, you say you film with your fiance by yourself uh, and first time actress. What was that like for you to, to film with no crew by yourself with your fiance, first time actress? Yes. Yeah, so, um, um, you know, I've, I've, I've worked with first time actors before and it's, you know, it's kind of a struggle sometimes to get them, get them into the zone and whatnot. And, uh, that's, it's just because it's, it, you, you have to prepare for it. You have to build a relationship with, with that actor in order to get them comfortable in front of you and to know what you, uh, how to direct them to get, um, to get the performance that you want um luckily for me this is this is my fiance she's my partner we live we, we lived in a really tiny apartment together like and you know we lived there for two years and you know we've been together for four years now and so i know her really really well and we, leading up to the actual shooting we watched you know we watched some of our favorite films we watched like hereditary and rosemary's baby and baba duke and you know, really trying to get some inspiration in cinematography and feel, um, which I'm hoping you can draw some parallels, especially with Babadook. That's uh, definitely one of our top, top films. Um, and when it came down to her acting in the role, we, we didn't really rehearse. And, you know, we, we set it up and we were thinking like, this is, you know, this film, it's just for us. We're just going to have some fun and make this thing. And, see what happens with it but as soon as she hit that first line and that first monologue um which is the first delivery in the movie when we jump into the room and she's like having a panic attack in that moment and trying to like hold herself at the door and not like with like uh, trying to like hide but also like speak normally and trying not to break down at the same time i mean uh, she just jumped right into it which i am so grateful for because i was worried about lighting and i'm putting nd gels on on the back windows and i'm you know i'm trying to tuck the camera into this tiny corner in in the space and you know and there's this long pan move I couldn't see what I was shooting at that moment. So I, <laughs> so I was like really like grateful to see that she could hold her ground without too much direction or, you know, and she could get it in, in one or two takes and it was like, all right, let's, let's move on. That was, that was it. So I was yeah in a really great place with, with her. And I, I think you'll, you've probably seen in the film, like she's incredible. She really is just, just next level. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, we're, I, I'm so grateful for that, yeah. <laughs> I think she definitely has a career in filmmaking. So yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, stay, you you guys very, uh, watch watch uh, uh, Open Up, it's it's really good. Um, Bergy, tell us a little bit about, you know, any any interesting facts that you may want to talk about or any uh, uh, fun stories, you know, while filming. Um, okay. I'm like, where do I start? So I think like, I think the, the main, it was, it, it, you know, I had gotten my feet wet before as like a producer. This was my first time as a writer, actually putting like a film together, right? So uh, I think there was a lot of learning um, in the sense of, you know, permits. And, you know, uh, because I was going through the UCLA extension program at the time, it, helped a little bit with certain fees and stuff with like the Burbank Police Department, something I didn't know I had to get a permit, even though we were on a stage, you still need a permit. And I'm like, but I'm on a stage. And they're like, well, we just need to make sure you're not doing explosives. I was like, no explosives. Do I still need a permit? They're like, yes. It's like a whole like, and then the fire department gets involved. So it's like little things like that. And I use some union actors. So going through the union as well and that paperwork. So I kind of was doing everything. And it was the day that we were shooting that my co-director was like, okay, you can let go now. <laughs> you can go ahead and let go. And I was like, eh, I don't know. But and I just, it, it's, you know, just having a little, I think what I learned was like having a little more faith and leaning on my team a little more 
And I think it's just because that's just growing pains of it all for me. Um, you know, and, and she also pointed something out that I didn't, when I wrote it, I didn't even have it in my mind. She's like, when we did the first, one of the first scenes, she just said, she's like, you know, this is a social justice piece. And I was like, is it? And she's like, yeah, you know, you're talking about immigration. You're talking about dreamers. That's what this is. And I, I never even looked at it that way. I, I never, that wasn't my intention. So s certain things organically would just happen on set like that, that gave it another feeling, you know? Um, and, and I then went into every scene from that, that point on shooting it that way. So, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's a good insight. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Lorena, please tell us a little bit about any fun facts uh, uh, during your production. Uh, maybe you can tell us about, you know, working with, uh, what was it like to work with George Lopez and, and Zach uh, Gutsa again? Um. Sure. So this project, I like to tell everyone was like just manifestation at its finest. And really when you put things out there in the universe that the universe will listen, but you do have to work hard. Um, because I, this was like my dream cast, you know, these were like the dream actors that I wanted for this project and they jumped on board to be a part of it, you know, like George and Zach and Marlene and Trisha and Katie, you know, we had incredible cast, um, you know, in front of the camera, as well as in behind the camera, we had Dean Cundy who, you know, uh, shot Jurassic Park, Apollo 13, um, Back to the Future, you know, he's just incredible and super talented so it was about creating this this you know team that would come together and I'm so grateful that everyone jumped on board and honestly there were a couple of times that I had to really pinch myself you know and, and you know we're shooting three days we're on a tight budget tight schedule and you you're trying to be in the moment but you know you have to get the shot and you have to be out of here in an hour so um but I had to pinch myself because I couldn't believe that these people were here delivering these lines that I had written a couple of months back and this, you know, story is, is comes from such a deep personal place in my heart, and it was just an outer body experience to 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 be seeing this unfolding, you know, before my eyes. So I was super grateful, and yeah, to work with George, I mean, just incredible. You know, he gave so much of his heart and 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 warmth to this character, and I I'm super excited for people to to see at last and see him in this role. I don't think we have before um so that's that was yeah our, our project in a nutshell awesome no I love that thank you so much for sharing that um Miguel tell us about any fun facts or anything interesting that we may not have known you know like uh watching the film uh, <laughs> you know working with kids everything is a surprise no everything can be a real surprise uh, y, y haciendo comenzamos haciendo misterio Queríamos comenzando como si fuera misterio, pero me pasó algo muy singular, fue cuando terminamos de editar y dijimos, wow, muy parecido a la, a la situación de Virgie, this is a social justice thing, no, ya no es tanto misterio, ya es algo, le estás dando voz a los inmigrantes, ¿sí? ¿Por qué razón un inmigrante va a pasar acá? ¿Por qué tienen siempre que ver que el inmigrante es menos? Y hay otros que se creen más. ¿sí? Entonces, el poder ver desde otro punto de vista al inmigrante es muy lindo, particularmente si el inmigrante es niño. Entonces, le estamos dando voz, y más cuando acaban de pasar esta vorágine de las elecciones, eh, pues era el momento preciso. Era el momento preciso para darle ese estilo. Sí estaba escrito de esa manera, but you don't realize until you see the final product. They say, like, that's, that's true. O sea, lo ves y tú piensas, no, nos vamos a ir por misterio, nos vamos a ir por acá, no, el género se ve muy bien, se ve aquí, se ve allá. Trabajar con un escritor, yo creo, como soy actor, creo que las, eh, las, las eh, historias eh, tienen que estar bien contadas. Pero para contar una historia bien, la historia tiene que estar bien escrita. Y tener un escritor como Edu y Tijerina escribir esta, esta pequeña obra, esta pequeña eh, película o este short film para nosotros y con los niños, yo creo que es algo muy grande. Porque eh, sí, acaba de venir de hacer una serie que está haciendo para streaming. Está haciendo un documental acá, está haciendo... Y, y él como escritor está lleno de trabajo. 
Pero hacer un alto y decir, Edwin, tengo, eh, tengo alrededor de 14 niños que necesito hacer una historia. ¿Qué crees que si podemos hablar de esto, de aquello y lo otro? Y comienza toda esa vorágine y esperamos haberle hecho justicia a su historia, eh, particularmente cuando salen los subtítulos del final, que creo que es donde más le llega a casi todo el mundo, ese momento grave de la historia. Ojalá que a la gente le guste tanto como nosotros nos gustó hacerla. No, excelente, no, buenísimo, buenísimo. Sí, es un film muy, muy bueno, también muy recomendado. Todos los films es buenísimos, ¿eh? nos encantó a nosotros por acá tenerlos y pues es un placer y un honor tenerlos, ¿no? Aquí también, este, ya casi estamos terminando la, la, la entrevista. Eh, me gustaría saber eh, un poco uh, uh, acerca de algún proyecto que nos quieran eh, hablar, que esté en proceso o que esté a punto de salir, algo que quieran promover, sus redes sociales, algo, no sé. Este, comenzamos acá con, con JD. I'm sorry, I was set a question for me. Sorry, I was, I was, I, was, <laughs> I, I meant Spanish, to say, I meant to, sorry. I meant to say that in English. I'm my bad. Uh, any, any okay. upcoming, any upcoming projects that you may want to promote or, or social media where we, where people can follow you? Yeah, I'd, I'd love it. Um, you know, you can always contact me and you can see my latest work at livealittle.com. That's L I V A little.com. That's my production company that I run commercial work through. Um, but I always, but I also produce short films through um, the back end of that. I'd love to, uh, if anyone's ever interested in a conversation um, through Zoom chat, please don't hesitate to reach out through that. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, we'll go to Bergi. Bergi, tell us a little bit about any upcoming projects that you uh, have in the works or something that's coming up or any, you know, where we can find you on social media. Yeah, I am um, in the works. I have, I'm basically taking Dreamer and I'm, I'm, for the first time diving into uh, writing an hour long episodic. Wow. Um, I want to stretch out that story. I want to Good. now maybe take another dreamer story and you know, it's actually loosely based on a true story <clears throat> and politics and all the good stuff, right? So I'm doing that, I'm, I'm moving in that direction. And then uh, uh, for social media, you can follow me, at my personal, which is at Virgie Love, B-E-R-G-I-L-U-B, or my short film, which is at Dreamer Short as well. I, I keep updating, you know, more festivals and stuff that we're, we're going to be a part of, et cetera. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Virgie. Lorena, where can we uh, find you? And also, please tell us about any upcoming or future projects that you may be working on. Sure. So we are working on expanding at last to short right now to the feature. Uh, and everyone can find us uh, at at last uh, short film on Instagram. We're constantly posting festivals, any other updates. Uh, and my Uh, Instagram is at Lorena Gordon and I want to thank you Rogelio and OK Cine for for having us and we're super super happy to, to be here with you all. Oh thank you it's our pleasure uh, our, our pleasure to have you guys on on, on our festival absolutely. Uh, Miguel please tell us uh, where we can find you uh, social media wise or, or website wise and also if you have any um, you told you told us a little bit about uh, your you know your future uh, Uh, project uh, we got, uh, we got deja vu is coming uh and a very cool deja vu we did the song this time uh i want to do it a little bit more international so uh the song uh went to mexico uh with uh, some people who do uh music so the music that we have is is made for us uh for the song for the song was made for us y eso es un tramo importantísimo porque that will change the whole feeling of the of the film uh, that you have a very own music so uh we're taking small little details here 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 to compound and get you know a better job uh right now i'm just finishing I, i just gave to my editor my book so i wrote a book and it's right now uh with my editor so i'm very happy about it and on the month of august we're going to be shooting in colombia uh un nuevo programa para niños so que eh, estaremos Firmando en Colombia uh, very, very soon. You can follow me on my media. It's at miguelsahid.com or at M-I-G-U-E-L-S-A-H-I-D on every social media and Sociedad Actoral, Sociedad Actores, Sociedad Actoral.com. 
Excelente. Thank you so much. Uh, can you and you can you tell us a little bit about your your uh, your uh, acting program? Is it an acting program for children? Yeah, we got an acting. It's a conservatory of dramatic arts. Uh, it's been we got five years old until right now seventy eight years old. I got about a person seventy year, eighty years old. So eh, no tiene límites. Eh, basado casi siempre eh, todo la mayoría en español. Uh, we work a dual language program, uh, but we try to be strong in Spanish at least for those early ages, to make sure that that they don't forget that Spanish, that they work on Spanish. Uh, plus, most of the kids that you see on our TV right now, Telemundo Univision, they're coming from our school. Most likely, 90% of them will be from our school. So uh, that's great. Plus, we have an adult, a conservatory, for two years for the adults. Uh, so they actually have experience in front of the camera, doing soap, soap opera, short films, blah, blah, blah. So basically to give them opportunity to them, for them to grow. That's awesome. That's great to hear. That's really good. And, and that's one of the things that uh, here at OKC and Latino Film Festival, we are also, uh, uh, we, we do, we have uh, also the festivals going on now for seven years. And uh, a very important part and dear to my heart is the, uh, the uh, Film Institute that we, we started five years ago for high school age students. And so uh, our last question is gonna be, um, what advice would you give to uh, aspiring starting uh, filmmakers, you know, especially like our high school age students, you know, our institute, uh, it's a, a, a five to six weekend uh, workshops that we do uh, where we teach them, you know, writing, uh, camera work, directing, uh, acting, everything. They have to actually make their, their short film and, and, and the, the, the short film goes into the festival. So they get like a full experience of what to make and how to make a, a short film from beginning to end to the distribution process at film festivals. So what aspiring, uh, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers? And, and we'll start out with, with JD. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I have tons of advice. You could, <laughs> you could I mean, I'm sure we all do. Um, but I, I think the number one problem that uh, I kept running into as a teach, as a high school teacher and uh, the question that I kept getting um, was, can I do this? Can I do ABC? And it's never like with filmmaking, it's not, can I do it? It's how do I do it? You know, it's like, how do I get that done? Right. So it's, you know, and then that's something where you set your boundaries is, is it actually pop? Like, how do I get this done? And is it, is it going to fulfill my artistic vision in order, like working within those boundaries to these boundaries in order to achieve that? So not can I do it, but how do I do it? And that's what filmmaking is about. That's figuring out where those boundaries are and then staying with them, them and pushing them as far as you possibly can. Oh, that's great advice. I love that. I agree 100%. <laughs> Virgie, uh, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers? Yeah, like JD said, same thing. I, there's so much information I was like kind of like well where do you start and I think especially for aspiring filmmakers young filmmakers it's you know finding your voice like what's your voice what what do you want to say what's the stories that you want to tell if you had a book of all your work would there be a through line would there be a thread that connects it all and that goes for not only like the writers and the directors that goes for the cinematographers for the, everybody that you work on on with on set like what worked in, in for me was that everyone understood the story I was trying to tell and they were all fully on board with that. They have, were passionate about it. So, and sometimes it doesn't always happen. So, but having those conversations before you even are looking at a location, having those conversations, like, this is the story I want to tell. This is, this is the look I'm looking for. Like, trying to be as clear as possible as not only the story, the look, the feel, doing your research, you know, coming prepared. That's that's the main thing. And, and I think especially for young storytellers, it's what's your voice? What, what do you want to say? Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. Great, great advice. Uh, Lorena, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers? Yeah, uh, we, you know, JD and Virgie said, uh, I echo that 110%. Um, I would add, yeah, you know, making a film is 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 hard, whether it's three minutes long or an hour and a half long. It's it's hard and you have to really, you know, love it 
and that's the advice I give to, you know, any young person who comes up and says, I want to be, you know, a filmmaker. I just have to say, you, you have to love it because it's so hard. And that's why you want to tell stories, you know, like you said, Virgie, that are meaningful to you, that you, that, that you feel need to get told because um, that is going to be the thing that, that uh, is going to propel you to the finish line is if you know that I have to tell the story because of X, Y, Z you know, that is your, that is your, uh, just the, the cat, the, just the thing that's gonna, that's gonna take you to the finish line. And, and you just have to remember that and, and always be conscious of why you're making, you know, and why you're telling uh, the specific story that you're telling. Fantastic. No, thank you. Thank you so much. That was great advice. Uh, Miguel, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers, you know, and also, you know, like knowing your background that you work with uh, children so much, uh, you know, what advice would you give them? Um, don't stop. No matter what they do, don't stop. Don't stop. If you just finish your film, do the next one. Don't, don't stop. Do not rely on maybe on the success that you had for this project or the other project because there are people who have a uh, little success and they're like oh I did this movie I did this that and they forgot to keep going you have to keep going do not stop another uh, very good piece of advice I can tell is to understand the actors we are not like um, uh, a pop machine or machine of sodas that we can press here you cry here your you know sprite is you know coke and whatever no you have to understand the actors you have to feel the actors you have to communicate with your actors the actors are the one responsible for telling your story so they need to understand every single part of it if you the actors believe it the audience if the actors do not believe the story they will never uh the story will not be told the right way or the way that you want it yeah i don't know if it got freeze, frozen or anything <laughs> we, we got the gist of it thank you thank you so much thank you so much everyone once again congratulations for being uh at the ok cine latino film festival our seventh annual oklahoma cine latino film festival virtual festival this year and uh again thank you so much you know we couldn't do the festival without your amazing films and uh yeah and so with that you know i want to i want to say you know uh please you know stay in touch with ok cine latino and uh, we, we need your films. We need more and more and more voices, more Latinos in filmmaking. So thank you again. And we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you, Rogelio. Thank you so much. For thank us you. Our voice. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> promoting this uh, Latino film community. Uh, we should become a family, uh, yeah. you know, together because together we can, you know, we can do much more work together. So we can change the world. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gracias. Chao. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.